How's it going, people? And uh, happy 420. Purely medicinal. Yeah, how'd that happen? A little more Dream Theater. This is uh, Dream Theater doing Deep Purple. They decided to cover their a live album by Deep Purple because they like the song selection better that way. I love these guys. Uh, official bootleg. This just came in the mail from Ebola World and I had to I had to give it a look first, and <laughs> you should buy this. This is great. Subscribe to Bolo World. It even comes with stickers and stuff, and and he signed it. He didn't have to do that. <laughs> Thanks. I love it. Unbelievably messed up Bible stories. It's mostly just Genesis. Well, it is all just Genesis, but oh, it's a hoot. I love it. Uh, I've got two beers. I don't know if that's enough for this chapter. But, worst comes to worst, I've got a bottle of scotch I can finish it off with. Or finish myself off with. Second chapter of Elma. And it came to pass. In the commencement of the fifth year of their reign, the judges, that's that fifth year that they said they would talk about in this chapter. <laughs> about more contention comes up. Yeah, fifth year of their reign. Uh, their, uh, their being, uh, there began to be a contention among the people. There began to be. Instead of there was a contention. For a certain man being called uh, Am, wait, Amlichai, Amlichai. <laughs> uh, he being a very cunning man, yea, a wise man, as to the wisdom of the world, this place, that wisdom doesn't matter. It's all that afterlife shit you need to know about to make it through this life. I guess. Yeah. He being after the order of the man that slew Gideon. Gideon. That was Nehi. No, Nehor. Nehor. Not Nehi. Nehor. Who was executed according to the law? Now this Amlekai had, by his cunning, drawn away much people after him. Apparently that's really easy to do. You can get people to believe anything. Even so much that they began to be very powerful. Yeah, the side with the most drums wins. And they began to endeavor to establish Amalekai to be king over the people. Right after Mosiah said, no more kings. And we're going to take a step backwards to the time of judges, which didn't work very well, either. Now, this was alarming to the people of the church, and also to all those who had not been drawn away after the persuasions of Amalekai, for they knew that, according to their law, that such things must 
be established by the voice of the people. And I want to do some space trucking. There we go. Ah. Therefore, if it were possible that Amalekai should gain the voice of the people, he, being a wicked man, would deprive them of their rights and privileges. Oh, yeah, uh, of the church. For it had been his intent to destroy the church of God. Because he's a bad guy. And it came to pass that the people assembled themselves together throughout all the land, every man according to his mind, whether it were for or against Amalekai, in separate bodies, having much dispute, dispute, and wonderful contention. One with another. Wonderful. Interesting word choice. Uh, and thus they did assemble themselves together to cast in their voices concerning the matter. It's the democracy. And they were laid before the judges. And it came to pass that the voice of the people came against Amalekai, that he was not made king over the people. So the unbelievers don't have more sway than the believers. Or those believers just all woke up late and hung over and missed the boat. Like Homer Simpson on, on 420. <laughs> Now, this did cause much joy in the hearts of those who were up, who were against him. But Amalekai did stir up those who were in his favor to anchor against those who were not in his favor. Dream Theater. That's not Deep Purple. And it came to pass that they gathered themselves together and did consecrate Amalekai to be their king. Now, when Amalekai was made king over them, he commanded them that they should take up arms against their brethren, and this he did that he might subject them to him. Now, the people of Amalekai were distinguished by the name Amalekai being called Amalekites. And the remainder were called Nephites, or the people of God, the chosen ones. Except I think this time they did the choosing. <coughs> Sort of like Sadie Hawkins Day, you know, for uh, North America. <laughs> you get to pick. Therefore, the people of the Nephites were aware of the intent of the Amalekites. And therefore, they did prepare to meet them. Yay. They did arm themselves with swords and with scimitars. And with bows and with arrows and with stones and with slings and with all manners, all manner of weapons of war of every kind, including the ones previously listed. And thus they were prepared to meet the Amalekites 
at the time of their coming. And they were appointed captains and higher captains and chief captains according to their numbers. It's a 20 minute song, don't let them fool you, they're not done. This is a concert album. So, yeah, they, they, they run long anyway, that's what I like about Dream Theater. They don't give a fuck if they're commercial or not. <laughs> they don't even try, I think they got one hit. But they a ton of pretty damn good songs, they're all positive and shit, I love it. <laughs> They're just not scarred enough, I guess. <laughs> they gotta cover other people's stuff to get the psychic scars. I like it. <laughs> nice change. Alright. Uh. And it came to pass that the Amalekites came upon the hill of Amnihu, <coughs> which was east of the river Sidon, Kind of sounds like at a Poseidon, Sidon, the river of Sidon, Poseidon, so aquatic sound, which ran by the land of Zarahemla. Sounds like a name that sounds like L. Ron Hubbard made it up almost. <laughs> and next best thing, or something like that. And there they began to make war with the Nephites. Now Alma, being chief judge and the governor of the people of Nephi, Alma Jr., therefore he went up with his people, yay, with his captains and chief captains, yay, at the head of the armies against the Amalekites, Kind of almost makes you think of Amalekites, Amalekites, to battle. And they began to slay the Amalekites upon the hill east of Sidon. A river that, it's called something else today apparently. And we don't know which one they're talking about. And the Amalekites did content with the Nephites with great strength. Insomuch that many of the Nephites did fall before the Am Amalekites. Nevertheless, the Lord did strengthen the hand of the Nephites that they slew the Amalekites with great slaughter. Yeah, warring the good war and all. <laughs> that they began to flee before them. <sighs> and it came to pass that the Nephites did pursue the Amalekites all that day and did slay them with much slaughter. They slayed them with much slaughter. Insomuch that they were slain of the Amal Amalekites, 12,532 souls. We got a number. But since we haven't had n uh, any numbers of population or anything, all the way up to this point, these numbers no longer mean anything. There's nothing to compare them against. Thanks. I remember there was something else kind of different about Alma. They start coming up with crazy numbers and shit. And they don't stop. <laughs> like millions of people fighting each other all at once. Yeah. And I think they dropped them in volcanoes. And, no, wait, that's a different one. Sorry. <sighs> yeah. 
uh, yeah, the, the, uh, <laughs> 12,532 souls, and there were slain of the Nephites, 6,562 souls. Those last two on both sides, that sucks. Oh, by the way, I uh, I got a pearl of great price in large print coming. So when I finish this fucking book, probably in a year, I'll do that next. But I will. You know, unless a bolt of lightning nails me in the spleen or something. <laughs> and it came to pass that when the and when Alma could pursue the Amalekites. No longer he caused that his people should pitch their tents in the valley <coughs> of Gideon. So they named a valley after Gideon instead of a city. Well, that kind of fits his career, you know. <laughs> One big nader. The valley being called after that Gideon, who was slain by the hand of Nehor with the sword, and in the, this valley, the Nephites did pitch their tent for the night. And Alma sent spies to follow the remnant of the Amalekites, uh, that he might know of, of their plans and their plots. Their plans and plots. Aren't you plotting it when you're planning? And planning when you're plotting? Except you don't need to say it both at the same time. They mean the same thing. Fucking oxymormons. <laughs> There's so many of them. Whereby he might guard himself against them. These plots and plans and plans and plots. That he might preserve his people from being destroyed. Now, those whom he had sent out to watch the camps, camp of the Amalekites, so they were able to pursue them, because they could still watch their camps. So you weren't really chasing them that hard, you just got tired of them, tuckered out. <laughs> yeah, the, the spies that they sent out to watch the camp of the Amalekites were called Zeram and Amnor and Manti or Manti Manti and Limher. These were they who went out with their men to watch the camp of the Amalekites. Too bad they don't have any maps so I can figure out how this really works. No maps. Just silhouettes. Kindergarten shit. And it came to pass that on the morrow they returned in great haste, being greatly astonished and struck with much fear, saying, Behold, we follow the Camp of the Amalekites, uh, or sites, Amalekites, uh, Amalekites, I like that better. Um, and to our great astonishment, in the land of Minon, above the land of Zarahemla, in the course of the land of Nephi, we saw a numerous host of Lamanites, and the Amalekites have joined them. And they were upon our brethren in that land, and they are fleeing before them with their flocks and their wives and their children. 
uh, towards our city, and except we make haste, uh, they obtain possession of our city, and our fathers and wives and children uh, be slain. I don't think I'm going to have enough to finish this book. Oh, no. And it came to pass that the people of Nephi took their tents and departed out of the valley of Gideon. Run away! Towards their city, which was the land of Zarahemla. And behold, as they were crossing the river Sidon, the Lamanites and the Amalekites, being as numerous almost as it were as the sands of the sea, that's a lot, came upon them to destroy them. Oh no, time for a miracle. Oh, there it was. Nevertheless, the Nephites, being strengthened by the hand of the Lord, having prayed mightily to him that he would deliver them out of the hands of their enemies, therefore the Lord did hear their cries and did strengthen them. And the Lamanites and the Amalekites did fall before them. So they just fought better, but God was making it happen. That's not what I meant by a miracle. Most disappointing. These Mormon miracles kind of suck ass so far. But their prophecies are the fucking bitches. Deadly accurate. Almost like they were written like in the 19th century. And it came to pass that Alma fought with Amalekai with the sword face to face. And they did contend mightily one with another. <coughs> Woo. Ah, that's it. No more beer. Ah. And it came to pass that Alma, being a man of God, being exercised with much faith, cried, saying, O oh Lord, have mercy and spare my life. That, I mean, you're going to go to heaven if you die. What the fuck? Hey, God, can you get me killed? Because I can't do it myself. That's like a deal breaker. No, spare my life, that I may be an instrument in thy hands to save and preserve this people. And now when Alma had said these words, he contended again with Amalekai. <coughs> and he was strengthened in so much that he slew Amalekai with the sword. And he also contended with the king of the Lamanites, but the king of the Lamanites fled back before the Alma and sent his guards to contend with Alma. But Alma, with his guards, contended with the guards of the king of the Lamanites until he slew and drove them back. Which one? Both? He slew and drove them back. He didn't... All right, some were slain, some were drawn back. Okay. He, they're, they're trying to conserve space because they're writing on gold. And thus he cleared the ground, or rather the bank, which was on the west, which was was on the west.
which was on the west of the river Sidon, throwing the bodies of the Lamanites who had been slain into the waters of Sidon, Poseidon, that thereby his people might have room to cross and contend with the Lamanites and the Amalekites on the west side of the river of Sidon. So what, they're making a body bridge? I like. Time to improvise. Thought it might come to this. Lots of shit coming to pass. I should have played Hair of the Dog by Nazareth. And it came to pass that when they had crossed the river Sidon, that the Lamanites and the Amalekites began to flee before them, notwithstanding they were so numerous that they could not be numbered. Well, at least the dead were sitting still so you could count them. There's so many you couldn't number because they were like the sands of the fucking sea. And they fled before the Nephites towards the wilderness, which was west and north, away beyond the borders of the land. And the Nephites did pursue them with their might and did slay them. Yea, they were met on every hand and slain and driven until they were scattered on the west and on the north, until they had reached the wilderness, which was called her mounts, her mounts, and it was that part of the wilderness which was infested by wild and carnivorous beasts. Uh, if I would have known, I would have started with scotch and then chased it with beer. And then backwards. And it came to pass that many died in the wilderness of their wounds and were devoured by those beasts. And also the vultures of the air and their bones have been found and have been heaped up on the earth. That is the end of of Second Alma. Isn't that amazing? Warfare, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and it's still boring. How did that fucking happen? How do you write a boring war story? They'll tell you how. They'll show you. They did it. It's a freaking miracle. Peace the fuck out. See you guys in chapter three. Have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is, you are having. Bye. And buy, buy anything by Dream Theater. They got a lot of shit, and it's all fucking the shit.